You'll never be found anymore in any negative situation in your life. Because when he rose from the dead, we were raised up together with him. I'm made to sit together with him. Settled. No more running hell to scatter. No more running from pillar to post. Far above all the forces are trouble men. By the power of his resurrection, everyone's case is declared settled. The same way Jesus humiliated throat cancer as you heard this morning. Everything dying or dead in anyone shall be quickened back to life. If that includes you, let me hear your loudest amen. A little while you see me, a little while you see me no more. <laughs> but because I live, you shall live also. <laughs> because I live, you shall live also. <laughs> Death is swallowed up in victory. <laughs> you are burying no one in your household this year. No one here dies young. It's your day of change of story. Today is declared your day of change of story. In the name of Jesus. Father, thank you for another Easter celebration service. Let this celebration mark the end of everyone's negative situation in the name of Jesus. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Give the Lord a big hand of praise and please, you may be comfortably seated. Unveiling the power of his resurrection. Happy Easter Sunday to everyone. <laughs> Happy Easter Sunday to you and your household. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Revelation chapter 5, when we're having a recap, a reenactment of what happened, he said, and they sang a new song. It's all about celebration. Easter is celebration of the triumph of life over death. Victory over defeat. Pleasure over suffering. It's a celebration of change of story. They sang a new song. They sang a new song. You are singing a new song today. In the name of Jesus. You are singing a new song today. By way of introduction, John 14, 19. Yet a little while, and the world set me no more, but ye see me, and because I live, you shall live also. After he left, they saw the boldness of Peter and John and took notice of them that he had been with Christ. Because I live, you shall replicate me as I live. I'm leaving you behind to replicate me on the earth. As long as I'm in the world, I'm the light of the world. Now I'm gone. You are now the light of the world. A city set on a hill that cannot be hidden. If you care to believe what I'm saying, the works that I do shall ye do also, and greater works than this shall ye do, because I go to my Father. John 14 and verse 12. Now we see the wonders in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 45 beginning to 49. 
And so it is written, the first Adam was a living soul, but the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. How be? That was not first, which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and not what that which is spiritual. The first Adam was of the earth, and the second Adam is the Lord from heaven. As the earthly, such are they that are earthly. And as the heavenly, such are they that are heavenly. And as we are born the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. That's why as he rose from the dead, he turned us to heavenly citizens. We were raised together with them and made to sit together with them in heavenly places. So we are to bear the heavenly image here. We are in the world. We are not of the world. John 15 and verse 19. We are in the world. He said, ye were, if you were of the world, the world will love his own. But because you are not of the world and I've chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. John 17 verse 14 to 15. The word says, I've given you, I've given them the world and the world has hated them because they are not of the world even as I'm not of the world. I pray not that you should take them out of the pray not that you should take them out of the world, but that thou should just keep them from evil. At redemption, by the act of redemption, we are no longer of the world. We are now citizens of heaven. We are now members of the household of God, whose throne is in heaven. We need to bear this heavenly mentality to maximize the blessedness of the power of his resurrection. He didn't leave us here to struggle with the affairs of life. He spiritually positioned us to dominate the forces that be on the earth. And in the precious name of Jesus, your days of humiliation, your days of assaults, are finally over. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. What is in the power of his resurrection? Please know that the power of his resurrection imparts principally through revelation. Revelation is our access to the power of his resurrection. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 18. Paul the apostle was praying that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that he may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us all who believe according to the mighty, the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and sat him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. 21. Far above that he may know what is the exceeding greatness of his power. It is something to know. It's not something to pray. You pray for the Holy Ghost, but you need to have a revelation of the power of his resurrection. How much more will God give the Holy Ghost to them that ask him? So we pray for the endowment of the power of the Holy Ghost, but we have to seek the revelation of the power of his resurrection. It has to be sought. When it dawns, it repositions the believer supernaturally into the realm 
that Christ already paid for. Luke chapter 11 and verse 13. How much will we go give the Holy Ghost to them that ask him? <laughs> Ephesians 1, 18 to 19. That you may know. Pray that you may know. That you may know. Not pray to receive. Pray that you may know. Pray that you may know. The exceeding greatness of his power. <laughs> Towards us who believe. According to his mighty power. Which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. And set my own right hand in heavenly places. That you may know. That you may know. That you may know. The day I came to know that salvation has not left me out to struggle with life. That it has repositioned me. <laughs> According to Ephesians 2, 6. Raised me up with Christ. In heavenly places, I'm far above. It changed my entire outlook, sir. It changed my entire outlook. I was 25. It changed my entire outlook. I couldn't see any devil in any devil. It changed my entire outlook. You find me shouting, one billion demons can't stop my way. That is something I saw. My God, it's worth to know the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know, that you may know the exceeding grace of his power towards us who believe according to his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him up from the dead. That you may know, that you may know it's a thing to know. It won't deliver without revelation. It's a thing to know. It's a, we can't close here. It's a thing to know. Philippians chapter 10. My God, uh, you see, the depth of it is unfathomable. Philipp, Philippians chapter 3 and verse 10. That I may know him, that's Paul speaking, and the power of his resurrection, that I may know. It's a thing to know. The fellowship of his suffering. Be made conformable unto his death. Hmm. And he went on in that narrative. You'll find what he was talking about. No, that I've attained though. I've not known it yet. I'm still learning. <laughs> not as though I have attained. Either were already perfect in that realm. But I follow after. There is more to it. If that I may apprehend that for which also I'm apprehended of Christ. I want to get to that realm where Christ operated from. <laughs> By the power of his resurrection. Brethren, I cannot myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do. Forget those things that are behind. And reaching out because I know there are depths in it. I press towards the mark. For the price of the heaven of God in Christ Jesus. Very important. God's ultimate power resides in the mystery of the resurrection. God's, the omnipotent God, his omnipotency resides in the mystery of resurrection. Today, everybody will return with an eye-opening miracle. Everyone shall return with an eye-opening miracle. The resurrected cry was to them, but they couldn't know him. Because their eyes were blocked. Their eyes were blocked. But their eyes were open, had, holding that they should not know him. 
he was talking with them, they couldn't know him. They lived with him three and a half years, they couldn't know him. Their spiritual minds were blinded. And then he served them the communion and their eyes were opened. <laughs> and they knew him. And they knew him. Those who do know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. As we partake of this communion on this resurrection morning, every spiritual blindness shall be healed instantly. Yeah. My people are not destroyed because there are many devils. They are destroyed because of lack of of knowledge lack of knowledge spiritual ignorance is at the root of the afflictions of the redeemed for lack of knowledge but by this communion to, today as you partake of it everyone's spiritual eyes shall be opened yeah. the last battle you lost is the last you ever lose Revelation is the gateway to experiencing the power of restoration in our lives. Paul prayed that God will grant to us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. The eyes of understanding being enlightened. We need the Holy Ghost to help our access. <laughs> he empowers us to represent Christ here. But the social power comes on and um, put all things under our feet, both in heaven, on earth, and on down in the earth. He said, All powers. Resurrection came now with all powers in heaven and on earth have been given unto me. All powers. All powers. All powers. The good news is. Our long-awaited supernatural change of story in all areas of life is finally here. <laughs> the power of restoration is ordained for our supernatural change of story. He's not here. He's risen. As he has said, why seek the living among the dead? You'll never be found anywhere that does not represent Jesus anymore in your life. Yeah. Whatever has paid for on your behalf and my behalf, we will not have to pay for it anymore. Yeah. Our change of story by this power of resurrection includes from filthiness to holiness. Romans chapter 6 and verse 4. Therefore, we were buried with him by baptism unto death, that like unto Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father. Even so, we also should walk in the newness of life. Sown in corruption, raised in incorruption. Praise God. He went down to the grave as a sinner, they say, but he rose into glory. A revelation of prophecy and resurrection will deliver from sin and all things that defy. Going down in that Romans chapter 6, he says, sin shall not have dominion over you anymore. The price has been paid for us to have dominion over sin. And so from today, everything standing between you and God, working you against God, everything that's making God to turn his back on a man in anyone's life, shall be turned to a testimony. Yeah. 
First Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 42. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption and raised in incorruption. We need a resurrection mentality as entrenched in scriptures. We were found in corruption. He rescued our soul. I'm brought to the realm of incorruption. Empowering us to walk in the newness of life. Everyone among us today that receives this word, God will make your life a surprise to yourself. In Ephesians 2, verse 3. Let's start from verse 1, please. And you, at the quickened, who are dead in trespasses and sins. You know, the second Adam is a quickening spirit. We are in... In time past, ye walked according to the causes of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air controlling your, the affairs of your life, the spirit that walketh, that now walketh in the children of disobedience. There are forces in the world. Now what happens? Among whom ye also had your conversation in times past, in the loss of your flesh, Fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Now, verse 4 But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love towards wherewith he has loved us, even when we were dead in sin, has quickened us together with Christ, by grace we are now saved. Now, and has raised us up together and made us sit together with him in heavenly places. So it's a, it's a change of story platform. Resurrection is a quickening of our old life back into a new one. We need that mentality. We were once earthly by redemption. We are now heavenly beings. Whatever does not hold in heaven is not permitted in our lives. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, every filthiness of the flesh and of the spirit is crossed today by the power of his resurrection. <laughs> Each one who so desires shall live his life and her life to please God all the days of your life. <laughs> From weakness to strength. The resurrection power is ordained for a change of story from weakness to strength. From weakness to strength. It was so only weakness, but raised in power. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 43. Whatever obtained in Christ is what applies to us in redemption. So only weakness, raised in power. Revelation chapter 5 and verse 12. He obtained for us, after his resurrection, power, riches, wisdom, strength, strength, my God. Physical strength, spiritual strength, mental strength, emotional strength. Every root of weakness in anyone's life is caused today by the power of his resurrection. It's a covenant platform of exchange. The change of our old life to a new one. A change from weakness to strength. Number three, from shame to glory.
1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 43. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. Sown in dishonor, raised in glory. Perus Canaba, he found you and me wallowing in shame. He came and picked us up and raised us up into glory. He came down to raise many sons unto glory. My God. So the days of shame and reproach in anyone's life, they are declared over today. Yeah. The days of shame and reproach in your family, they are finally over. God rewrites the story of mankind through the mystery of resurrection. It's a rewriting of our story. <laughs> and what has been written has been written. It's time to step into it. It's time to step into this. You are stepping into it today. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Revelation chapter 5 verse 12. He obtained for us after his resurrection power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessings. So it's part of the seven-fold gifts of post-resurrection gifts of Christ. Post-resurrection gifts of Christ. Glory. The end has come to every issue of shame and reproach in your life. The shame of failure and setback is over. The shame of walking and nothing to show is over. The day of struggling for survival over and again is over. The shame of indebtedness is over. Yeah. The shame of marital turmoil is over. Yeah. When unbelievers are saying, but you say you are Christian, you know they go to church. Eh? You think Papa is beating Mama? They are telling you that. You find unbelievers settling you. It's not correct. Baros Kanaga. A plum keno. Unbelievers are asking you, as your business, I see you getting better or are you still struggling? Never. Never again. <laughs> By the power of his resurrection, God is writing your story today. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Can I tell you this? He unleashes the power of his resurrection through revelation. So sit down there, my friend, and, and absorb the word coming forth to you. That's how he induce us with the power of his resurrection via revelation. Via revelation. Thank you, Jesus. He also changes our story from captivity to liberty. <laughs> forces have had you bound. Unseen forces. You can't tell where they're coming from. They tie down certain aspects of your life. But when Jesus gave up the ghost, there was a great earthquake. And the graves were opened. And the dead of the saints came out of the grave after his resurrection. Momalos, a clombracto. Matthew chapter 27, verse 50 to 53. As Jesus rose from the dead, they also came out. So every hold of captivity on your life gives up today. The power, the power, the resurrection power is still the same today. No matter what they say, the power, the power, the resurrection power, it is still the same today. 
The power, the power, the resurrection power is just the same today. No matter what they say, the power, the power, the resurrection power, it is just the same today. Komalo te kalosh ale proktanero e magarakato nedi. Every generation of course holding any aspect of your life down, every spell of the wicked, tie your destiny down. They are finally broken today. Calvary saw me dot. Iba no jemi ti folo. Go go me jemi ni Jesus no kuro. Calvary saw me dot. Calvary ti saw me dot. Bogo o mi jemi ni Jesu no kuro. Calvary saw me. It's your day of release. There's an earthquake in the camp of your enemy. The grave they kept you in is open. You are released from captivity. Give the Lord the biggest hand of praise. Thank you, Jesus. Le Porealis, a country ago, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Light has come. Darkness must give way. Darkness must give way. Darkness must give way. Darkness must give way. Captivity does not hold in heaven. No, and you are not being raised together, made together with him in heavenly places. Who will get there to bind you? And it's far about principalities and powers and dominion and every name that's named. Not only in this war, also in that which is to come. Praise God. You are free at last. You are free forever. Everyone appointed to death is liberated. Thank you, Jesus. Shall the pre be taken from the mighty? Isaiah 49, verse 24 to 26. Or a lawful captive delivered? <laughs> but thou said the Lord. Even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I will contend with them that contend with thee, and I will save your children. You are not permitted to remain in captivity. You are out of captivity today. You are out of captivity today. Now, see what will happen to every agent holding you down in captivity. Verse 27. Verse 26. And I will feed them that oppress thee with their own flesh. And they shall be drunken with their own blood. As with sweet wine. And all flesh shall know that I, the Lord, I am thy Savior and thy Redeemer, the mighty one of Jacob. You know what? That is the resurrected the resurrect Christ. In a figure, I am thy savior. I am thy redeemer. My name is the resurrected Christ. <laughs> so captivity is not permitted on your life by any wicked devil. Therefore, today marks the end of every form of captivity in your life. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. Next, resurrection power changes our story from sickness to health. Sickness to health. Sickness to health. Sickness to health. 
Now, watch. Romans 8 and verse 11. If the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by the spirit that dwelleth in you. Restoration power quickens our mortal bodies. Restores our system back to health and vitality. To me so gitaneko and brekenora. They so call it Christ in you, the hope of glory. It's in you in its resurrected form. <laughs> My God. Uh, his presence is ordained to quicken our mortal bodies to fullness of health and vitality. My God, Christ in me. Colossians 1, 27, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Mm. You are entitled to health and vitality. So, every arrow of the wicked against your health and vitality returns back to sender. Start from verse 25, please. Colossians. 1, 25. We are of made a minister according to the dispensation of, the go of God, which is given me to you all to fulfill the word of God. Even the mystery which has been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints. What is that mystery? To whom God will make known what is the nature of his glory, of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you. The difference must be clear. You among the Gentiles, the difference must be clear. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, because the one says, I will put none of these diseases upon you, which I put upon the Egyptians, because I'm the Lord that healed thee. So Jesus came and made available to us the power of his resurrection, to quicken our mortal body, keep all our organs actively alive and functioning. Therefore, every malfunctioning organ in anyone's life, in anyone's body, is quickened back to life today. Your liver, your kidney, your lungs, your bones, your marrows, Whatever is out of order in anyone's body is restored back to order today. Yeah. And it changed our story from poverty to prosperity. Yeah. David said, I've been young, now I'm old, I've never seen the right of forsaking those children begging bread. By the power of his resurrection we are not um, we are not permitted to be beggars or paupers no he obtained for us as part of his post resurrection gifts power riches wisdom strength Honor, glory, and blessings. It's available. As you gain entrance by the power of resurrection to the terms of the covenant of divine health, you enjoy it. To the terms of his covenant of prosperity, you enjoy it. The days of begging to find what to eat, they are over in your life. The 
the days of borrowing to pay debt and borrowing to pay another debt, they are over your life. It changes our story from poverty to prosperity. Second Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. You know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, even though it was rich, yet for your sake and my sake he became poor, that with rich poverty might be made rich. And he obtained for us, after his resurrection, <laughs> the power to get wealth. Just stand in the terms and you find him confirm his word. He can never deny himself. From defeat to victory. No more defeat for you. No more defeat for you. No more defeat for you. No more breakdown for you. No more setback for you. It's not here, it's risen. Why seek the living among the dead? You'll never be found among the defeated again. You'll never be found among the frustrated again. Jesus paid the price through his death and resurrection. First John 5, 4. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world and he overcomes by faith. Faith in the finished work of Christ and the free gift that he offered us after his resurrection. You cannot be defeated anymore. <laughs> there was one in heaven. That's where you leave. Satan fought and his angels. Michael fought against him. And prevailed not. You don't suffer defeat in heavenly places. Neither was there any more place found for the devil in heaven. Praise God. He was cast down to the earth. Are you seated in heavenly places? They don't lose battles there. They don't lose battles in heavenly places. They don't lose battles in heavenly places. You never lose any battle anymore in your life. Wait a minute. It is not unspiritual to be challenged. Even Jesus said, the prince of this world came to me and has not an enemy. It's not unspiritual to be confronted. It's not unspiritual to be challenged. But it's, un, it's anti-covenant to be defeated. You are seated in heaven, heavenly places. Revelation 12, 7 to 12. Satan fought. <laughs> Along with his angels. Daniel, I mean, Michael resisted him. And Satan prevailed not. Now, you are not part of that fight, though. You are just watching the film. You are just in heavenly place, you don't fight. You watch the film. You are just watching the film. And Satan prevailed not. Neither was there any place found anymore for him in heaven. And they overcame him. Come on now, praise God. They overcame him. They overcame him by the power. Of the blood and word of their testimony. They don't lose battles in heavenly places. Stop that. You are sitting far above the forces that bring people down. Far above. Far above. They don't lose battles in heavenly places. John, they don't lose battles in heavenly places. You never lose battles anymore in your life. They don't lose battles in heavenly places. You lose no more battles in your life. You lose no more battles.